Good evening, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back again, like like every week, I guess. You know, I, um, recording a little early this week. I guess if we talk about anything that's kind of time Shell sensitive, shot. yeah, well, well um, or weather related, people might be like, "What? It ain't raining." Yeah. Or which, yeah, I don't think it's going to rain anytime soon. No, I hadn't seen it. No, we're kind of in the similar boat we were in, where uh, you know, I got a message today that. One of our local granaries is uh, only taking contract already because the river is so low. Yeah. So. Um, well, yeah, because I obviously it didn't rain in here, but I guess it's not raining anywhere up north of us in any of the watershed for the Mississippi. No, uh, no, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting. Hey, before we get in, what you drinking? Um, Old Forester, um, uh, the Prohibition. Uh, oh, what I just got. yeah, yeah. I, I noticed you doing that, but I was like, I'm, I'm not going to discuss it until we sit down. Okay, and all right. Record. Is it the 1920? Yeah, yeah. The the, the that what, was, was it prohibition good. style? Or yeah, 115 proof. Yeah. Yep. Well, <laughs> well, you saw what I did. So, like a lot of you, we probably you probably end up with about an odd amount in the bottom of your bottle. Now, if you have like your standard go to, you know, if you're drinking Evan Williams every time, then you probably don't care. But I mean, I Bobby Lee's same way. We like to kind of, man, you like to mix it up, and try some different stuff. So I've got pieces of of bar uh, bottles all over. So hell, I just I've started doing like an infinity bottle where I just mix them. And so tonight I've got a mixture of Blue Note, yep. um, our local guys, Memphis here, yep. Blue Note, and the Prohibition Old Forester. Which is yeah. that one's 120 proof and the old Forester's 115 proof, so I'm going pretty hot tonight. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but I tell you what, I have been really looking forward to this glass of whiskey tonight. As a lot of our regular listeners know now, you know, this is my, I don't do much drinking besides when we record. Yeah. Well, I can tell we're full swing in the harvest because my sinuses are so jacked up it's not even funny and like all the dust yes and dad and i were talking about it because his are messed up mr roberts are messed up but the time that gets us our our combine as you're harvesting the stuff will build up in the front of the combine like up on the throat well when we park it for the end of the day we keep a soft towel in each combine we wipe our windows down and then we kick the stuff off the throat when you kick it off, it's like a black cloud of dust, and there's no like there's just no escaping it. By the time you get done, and the bad thing is, a lot of times it might be dark, so you don't even actually realize just how much you're yeah. breathing in, dude. Last night, and it, I felt you great. Put your mask on. I know I should have, uh, man. I felt great all day in the combine yesterday. I dusted the combine off like that within ten minutes. My my throat was itching, like scratchy, and man, my sinuses were clogging up. And by the time I went to bed last night, I already had a sore throat, and it was just it's constant drainage. Uh, yeah, it's been well, terrible. I mean, masks are coming back. Well, yeah, yeah, I guess I could be ahead I, of the curve. Actually, no, you're not. You're, you're not ahead of it because not even. I mean, the road you live on out here. I can't remember what day it was. Maybe yesterday, there was a gentleman. Walking down the side of the road. Oh, no. All by himself wearing a mask. And I'm just like, and he wasn't mowing or like weed eating or doing anything where like he would just, his activity would, you know, he wasn't dicta, cleaning off yeah. the combine or anything that would demand that, that that for his health he wear a mask. I never understood Like just that. walking down the sidewalk. And outside. Outside, no human, I mean, I guess me driving past him on the road, you know, for a split second, I'm within, you know, Man. 30 feet of him but yeah. that's as logical as the people you see by themselves in a car with a oh yeah mask well on. i've always the, the inside the car all by yourself wearing them, i'm always like maybe there's like a sick person laying down in the back seat like, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying see. to give them benefit of the doubt yeah. like what's what what's the reasoning for this because that makes zero sense yeah like that, like that that's a virtue signal of the highest degree like, yeah I, and look i don't those masks are not comfortable like I don't enjoy them. Like after, well, I remember when I flew to Vegas, you know, we had to wear a mask and it was like cutting into my ear. Maybe I have big ears, which I'm a Hanks. We're kind of known for our big ears, but, um, and big everything else, you know, and, you know, um, <laughs> That's what they say about people with big ears, right? <laughs> um, they got big appetites. Uh, but no, uh, it would cut into my ears 
and so I did fill out figure out a hack on that that I'll save if I have to fly again and they're being stupid but um I just don't get it yeah I don't get it but yeah well, I, yeah anyway if well, you want to wear a mask wear one I guess whatever yeah not hurt anybody else but uh, save some for the folks that got to be cleaning off the combines <laughs> at, the, at the end of the, the long day of harvest. I used a hoe this afternoon. Like when we got so done today, I was back, kind of back like away. Feet. I tried to get Mr. Tim DeSalvo to do it. Let's he showed you, up. You need a hired man. <laughs> well, I, I got the dude that reached out. I could, he's, I could be like, here you go, man. Here's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah but i don't want to be a turd so no i i clean it off yeah, you, need, you need like a high school kid yeah especially cause like they show up you know after they get out of school just help for a few hours you know before dark be like all right you think you want to farm here you, you go start at the low end oh uh, man that'd be some yeah there's i would the combine would be the place i'd be like you're gonna grease it you're gonna clean the air filters like that would be yeah. the stuff to break well, them I can in. do all that at, at the end of the day. You know, yep. if you had some lights, have you ready to go for the next All in combines, they got you flip the shields up. They got big bright lights up underneath them. Oh man, y'all, yeah, yeah, we can light them up. It's all fancy, but LED lights, everything. Um, hey, go to agzaga.com, guys. I don't yep. know if they have masks or not, but they got everything else you need. Again, I've been using yeah. that pen every day. So yeah, now uh, shoot, we can't even list all the things. You know that they've got obviously you just need to check them out um pretty much anything you need around the farm the ranch whatever um check with them because you're gonna get 10 percent off yep U using that discount code talk, talk dirt talk dirt all one word all caps yep. um yeah i don't know i'm 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 looking forward to uh well here just the next couple of months the the toys i am too um, i don't know what i want yet yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm buying these toy tractors for my son. Yeah, you know, I promise I won't play with them. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, I'll, I will be driving. Um, no, I can already say I'm gonna be just like my dad. Be like, all right, listen, son, like, you know, you sure you want to take that out of the box? If you just leave it in the display, you know, <laughs> or, or or like, hey, you could take it out, but don't don't be don't be banging it around or, uh, um, you know, being too rough with it. Because I know I've got some that we just demolished. Yeah, like like. I, yeah, and I hadn't looked to see what they would be worth. They were still like in mint condition, but well, it was funny. I Levi found I had some like NASCAR memorabilia in my mm -hmm. old bedroom at my parents. I had a bunch of Jeff Gordon stuff, and there was a couple of race cars that were still in the packaging. Yeah, and they were up on like this display, and Levi he saw him. He it's hilarious. He's got a. He's got like an action figure of Jeff Gordon um, that I had, and he'll fight Batman and Mr. Freeze, and he'll be like, Mr. Freeze is fighting Jeff Gordon. And I'm like, nice, that's nice. <laughs> but uh, he has seen these cars, and he's like, I want those cars. And so they brought them down the other night, and we're over there. And, I mean, they're they're like 30 years old. And uh, he's like, yeah, I really I want to play with them. And I said, man, son, I don't know if we need to open them or not. I said, hell, they might be worth something. And Dad's like, yeah, you don't, you don't need to open them things. Hey, it's thirty years old. They're worth. Yeah, I say by the time they're at that age, like, yeah, yeah. Well, I I was like, let me just Google them. I looked them up on eBay, and they were worth like twelve dollars. So I was like, whatever. So he opened them and <laughs> right. was playing with them. But um, yeah, it was it was funny. Yeah, uh, but no, go to agzaga dot com. Use the code talk talk dirt, all one word, all caps. Save ten percent. And again, you help us out and help them out. Yeah. Um. So I got a hilarious story. All right, I, I like kind of, yeah. Man, I laughed today till I was weeping. I was actually crying today. Oh, wow. I was laughing so hard. Like, I, I had to take, it was puddling on the bottom of my sunglasses. I had to take them off and wipe my eyes. Brock, he was laughing so hard. He was crying. So, yeah, I ran into y'all today. Yeah, yeah, at the grocery we, store. We were, we were did all... your dad ride with you? No, no. What did was... he drive? I would. He got a new truck. I knew he got like a big lifted truck, bigger than mine now. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. But uh, no, he, he it, it looks just like his old truck. Basically, it's just a, a new. I didn't see flat. it in the lot. It, it would have been there because. Okay. Uh, yeah. I didn't yeah. Go. He, he popped in, checked with the deli hat on for the hot plates for lunch. I don't think he liked what they. they I didn't had. want that. I ended up. I did get. I got chicken strips over there. Dad got the stuffed bell peppers, but last time I did, I paid for it dearly. Over yeah, there. that does sound like indigestion waiting to happen. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Saw you up there, but um. <laughs> 
So we've been shelling corn. Well, I, I put tires on the black truck. Okay. So it's usable now. It's funny. I had a guy lowball me real bad today, and I said no. And I said, and actually, the price just increased substantially because I just put 10 tires on this truck, and he never wrote me back. So I'm like, in your face, because I don't even think I want to sell it anymore. I put tires on it. I'm driving it. I'm like, and all the guys at Quality Tire, they were like, damn, that's a badass truck. They were like, man, I would love to have that truck. And driving it, I'm like, man. I just don't know that I'm going to sell this truck. Yeah. I've fallen in love with it all over again. But that's not the truck that I'm going to laugh about. So I got new front tires on my Kenworth. Yep. I just got it back. Purple truck. Yep. It's a monster. I had it. Did I tell you I had it turned up? No. So it had a, it's got a C15 cat in it, 475 horsepower, plenty of power. But I'm just not programmed that way, so I took it and I had you're, it. You're like Tim, the tool man type. Yeah, I want to I want to squeeze it for everything it's got. And um, the guy had to work on it a little bit. And I said, man, because he's got a programmer and all that. He's got all the electrical stuff. And I said, how much can you crank that truck up to? And he said, well, said, what is this? I said, C15. He goes, I got a 550 horse tune for that truck. And I said, is it safe? And he said, it's a Caterpillar file. He said, it is straight from Caterpillar. He said, it's what, he said, that motor is designed for this. And so I was like, all right. So he cranked it up to 550 horse. So it's like a, it's a whole new monster. And the guy that drove it today, he was like, it ain't lacking for power. He was like, that thing is bad. Um, but I got it back and I wanted to hook it up, and use it. So we took it out there, hooked it up, and uh, <laughs> just to, like hop a bottom. Yeah, on my trailer I got. Yeah. And so he was driving it. Man, he's about he, he's hauling the Hales Point. It's about an hour and a half drive from here and back. Yeah, yeah one, one way. Yeah, hour one way. Yeah, yeah, not here and back. Yeah, just there is about an hour and a half. And uh, he's probably 20 minutes from there, 15 minutes from there. And my phone rings. I'm on the combine. He said, hey, man, this uh, your air horn has come on. We, I hit a bump, and the air horn came on, and I can't make it turn off. And I said, man, it's done that before. I said, you got you to gotta hit on the lever up there. I had unhooked the cable because Brad, when he was hauling for me last year, he pulled it to honk at somebody, and it wouldn't shut off. Oh, I, was shell I was actually cutting beans last year. And I came by him, and he was sitting in the truck, and I could hear, Mer! and when he got off the truck, he goes, how you get that damn air horn to turn off? I was like, you got to beat it up there. So I told him, I said, man, take a hammer or something and hit the little valve lever up, and just keep, you got to hit it pretty hard, and it should shut off. So I'm on the phone with him the whole time, and I can hear him. He's banging on it, and he's like, man, it won't turn off. <laughs> and he's still loaded. 20 minutes from there and he's like man i can't get it to shut off he said hell i'm just gonna have to i'm just gonna have to haul it he said i'll just have to let the air run out to talk to anybody <laughs> and, and so he goes ahead and he hauls it and uh man i'm shelling corn which is part that trips me out is when you go through the granary <laughs> there is you drive through like into a little it's like a barn not a barn but like a metal barn type building you drive yeah. in and there's usually a worker in there that's opening the doors and yeah, so, all that sounds oh, bad. dude uh, yeah and he's like you know <laughs> his horn is just screaming <laughs> and, can't get it. Yeah, and, it won't. and he said he shoved some rags in it to try to soften it but he said the air pressure kept blowing them back out yeah well uh so it's getting closer to time for him to be back and my phone rings and it's brad that used to drive for me last year and as soon as i saw it ringing i knew because brad works in covington and he's coming down the highway <laughs> and i answer the phone and brad goes man i was at the store today and all of a sudden i heard some sort of racket and he said and i knew what it was as soon as i heard it <laughs> he said i look outside and he said here comes that purple truck and it's just going down the highway. All, all the way through town <laughs> all the way through town you're gonna get a damn noise oh he dirt. said the guy driving he said man i saw two cops and he said i just knew they were gonna pull me over he said they didn't he said a woman got out of the way like he said i was going down the highway at one he point think, everybody thinks he's blowing the horn out <laughs> yes 
this woman he said she actually completely got off the road so i could go by and we're in the field and we're like waiting on him to get there because we're loaded up and all of a sudden you hear <laughs> you can like hear it coming and man he pulls in the field and it is it is so loud like i forgot how loud it is but it's just wailing loud and dude we are dying and he even like when he pulls in he just throws his hands up and he's even laughing and dad it was hilarious dad goes damn he said i'd have told you to come get that son of a bitch if i was the one driving it he said ain't no way i'd have drove it because i mean dude he literally drove that thing for probably nearly two hours straight with it just screaming the whole time and he's laughing and so in the morning we got to fix the uh, air horn but yeah man i was i was like crying (laughs) laughing when he pulled in i wish i had videoed him pulling in just so people could grasp the loudness of this yeah and he had to drive through munford like he turned on like in town Main yeah, oh, street yeah, yeah. He, he had to go through several little towns i know? guarantee you if if you had walked outside at the birdhouse or not the birdhouse but at the clinic when he was going through munford you would have heard him you would heard it yeah like, man so oh gosh well, that's that, yeah that, that is me pretty, tripping out. pretty comical it, it, it reminds me a little bit of a story um you know your dad, especially, kind of their group of friends, they used to have a guy they would always prank. Talking about Big Bub? Yeah. I thought of that immediately. That's exactly but what I thought they, of. W- w- they, they wired his truck up somewhere or another where every time he hit the brakes, the horn... They put a siren under the the, uh, the hood. Okay. They and had it, this little red siren in there. and it, it, But it was wired. Yeah, anytime he would touch the <laughs> brake pedal, it would, it would sound. And I... <laughs> Which, of course, he knew immediately what what, what was up, you know, and why. Oh, and yeah. Who had done it to him. Yeah, that man, he got mad. Uh, that's what Dad said. Yeah, he pulled out, and he said, because there was a stop sign right down there, and he said they, they could hear it. Yeah, well, they were, I'm sure they were all watching because they knew he was going to, you know. <laughs> You know, he came in there. He'd be like, "Who oh, I'll put that damn thing on my truck, man. I yeah. think he ended up, like, snatching it <laughs> off the truck. Yeah, he was mad as hell. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is a that is a good story. <laughs> yeah, I... We all laughed. I did tell Marcy, I said, the only thing that would have made it funnier is if it would have happened to Cookie. If Mr. Cookie would have been working for me at the time, if he'd have been the one driving it, because he'd have, he would have walked home from there, I think. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, it was, it was good. It was a classic. So I got to pull the headliner out. Unfortunately, it's not like an easy thing to do. We got to pull the headliner out and like find the valve. And you can agree, like lube the valve up and it'll be good but at this point i'm like i think we're gonna just disconnect this thing yeah i don't feel like this happening again right yeah so yeah but uh harvest is rolling on i've shelled man we shelled probably 170 acres or so of corn doing pretty good Uh, again i'm i'm on basically the worst ground so far um and it's averaging around probably around 140 to 150 that's pretty which good is, yeah if that's if that's the low end yeah. yeah oh and that it just gets better as i go um the field i'm moving to in the morning it's still part of the same farm but it's all the lower ground and i'm anxious to see what it does and really anxious to see what it's going to do in shelby county because that corn that i planted at the hay field out there has been winning all the yield contest this yeah. year so <clears throat> well I, you, you talked me into it uh going ahead and spreading some fertilizer Good. that's what i did yesterday even though like literally our 10-day forecast you get out today like nine we got like a 16 percent chance and day 10 is like a 20 percent chance and that's it Everything else is single digit chance. So I'm like, you'll still be good. You'll be I, good. I didn't. Uh, which do you figure like? And I had them put whatever the in the what do they call it? The, they put on the nitrogen to help it keep it from uh. Oh, I know what you're talking about. And losing it. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know how long can it theoretically sit there before you get a rain? Before you feel like okay, I'm. Losing I don't know. Something. We man, we don't sweat it too bad because uh, I mean we, you know, when we start sometimes, especially if it's a wild season where they get behind you know you'll go ahead and get them to fertilize a bunch of your stuff i've never noticed a drag really um, well, well i didn't put it down probably quite as thick as i would have if there had been like real rain in the forecast yeah. but i was like i'm just i didn't have a lot going on yesterday it was my day off um, it's pretty well designed at this point i didn't have a lot else really that i needed to get done i was like all right i'm just gonna go ahead and do it are um, they variable rate or you just get a 
straight straight no, shot. I, I was spreading it with a. I was just using one of their bugs. Okay, um, gotcha. Yeah, just yeah, and I'm just putting and I just put straight nitrogen, just trying to get you well, know some fescue stock pile. Just um, glad you ain't using chicken litter. Stuff stinks so that's bad. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well. Well, where I was spreading this, the only person that would have been able to smell it would have been me. <laughs> <clears throat> like, my house has been the only one. Well, your wife might be saying that it stinks too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, she was out of town. She wouldn't have known that necessarily. <laughs> anyway, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, man, uh, I wouldn't sweat it. I think, I think you probably did the right thing going ahead and spreading it. Yeah, I, I just needed to get it done. Well, I was looking at the calendar, and I was like, well, the reason we're recording early is because I'm going to be out of town next week, which... Hopefully, by the time this episode comes back, I, we should be on the way back home. If not, on the road, possibly even back home. So, um, yeah, on next week's episode, I'll be able to tell you about a, I guess maybe a little more of a crop tour going yeah. out west and and. and yeah, you ought to have some good update for this on that. Yeah. Well, let's see here. We got. <clears throat> sorry, guys, my nose is very stopped up. Um, I was trying to see our last question we got some more question a uh, q and a i want to make sure i get the right all right i see we did that one i'm thinking this is the one we're on tonight and again i do apologize if uh we have missed your question and i would ask you i'd encourage you to shoot us an email at our talk dirt podcast.com and go to the contact page fill it out submit your question that is by far the easiest way for me to keep up with the questions um this one comes in oh first i did see uh or get a text from buddy bennett used to work for us yeah he actually was texting me a picture of the truck at the granary and i told him to go help him fix his air horn (laughs) and he said i wondered if the guy was just really angry or what was going on up there um but bennett was like i asked him he said he listens to every episode and uh he said man i said what any suggestions he said y'all gotta have lee back on man i want to have lee hear lee again on the show with uh whitetail partners yep yep he uh he was like man it's getting close to deer season y'all need to have lee back on there i'm sure he'd be willing to do that oh yeah i'm gonna gonna be in the truck with him for about 20 hours well y'all can just Um, do a 20 hour marathon well we could yeah yeah um so yeah well uh all right bennett we appreciate you man but so here we go got a question from heath heath writes in love the show guys y'all can get pretty funny but i really enjoy the educational part hey we try to keep a good blend over here he said i've got two questions for bobby lee all right number one a while back you said you had a feeding plan to feed out steers i was hoping you could send that to me my wife and i are planning on feeding one out for ourselves and maybe for customers in the future Yes. So I think he, he did his email is on here. Okay, so you got his email. Yeah, share me his email, and then I can, I will. Uh, y'all yeah, get that sent over. You, you. By the time you hear this episode, because again we're recording early, you should have already gotten that email. Yeah. Um, and I can send it to anybody else too. It's uh, and I hate that I can't give you like the web address for it, but it literally like it, it disappeared from the internet where I originally found it. Um, but it's a PDF file. Um, I'm not going to send you a bunch of spam or anything. At least a hundred. I've a few people like ask me for the plan. I'm like, well, I have to email it to you. Give me your email. And they're like, no. I'm like, <laughs> like I'm, I mean. Like, not like, trying to steal like, your, I'm, you're like, look, I only need that in your email or uh, your, yeah, your no, credit I need, card. I need, yeah, your, your your birthday, your social security, yeah. credit card, three digits. Yeah, you know, Not the, that much. Just normal stuff, stuff yeah. you know. But um, All right, yeah, he'll email that to you. If there's like 150 of you that want that, email Bobby Lee or ask Bobby Lee, and he'll send out 150 of them. Yeah. So the second question, we live in the Oklahoma panhandle. Right now, we have 25 mama cows, a bull, and about six heifers we're planning to keep back. I'd like to get them on a mineral regiment, but I'm not sure what to give them or what times of the year to give it. I know we live in different regions, so what works for you may not for me, but any input would be appreciated. Y'all keep it up. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. So, hey, thanks. Yeah, I, Oklahoma Panhandle, a neat part of the country. I drove through there last summer. Um, I drove the whole length of the Oklahoma Panhandle. I guess the whole length of the state of Oklahoma. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I would recommend uh, reaching out to somebody in the area. Well, you know, cover what your protocol would be. So – I I spend a good bit of money on mineral. I I buy premium type minerals. I mean, you can go to just a co-op and get just a basic, you know, just 
um, balanced mineral. Now, my mineral will, will change throughout the year, um, and they're not a sponsor, um, but uh, I, I like Vitafirm products. Um, I feed their Vitafirm heat this time of year, um, which is designed to help keep them cooler, especially maybe a little more important for us because we have a lot of fescue and and. You may or may not, if you don't have fescue, you may not be familiar with it, of course, but um, it, it can cause the cattle to heat up, um, endophyte-infected fescue especially, and so that, that helps to counteract some side effects. I do also put out um, the fly control is in that mineral too, so basically it's the insect growth regulator. So the flies that are trying to reproduce in the cow manure from the cows that have eaten that mineral they're basically sterile so okay um, i wondered how that worked yeah that, 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 that's how it works and so especially if you don't have a lot of cows right around you like with your neighbors it can work really well yeah because if your neighbors got cows but they're not feeding it as well well you're just gonna get all their flies i mean yeah or, or there's gonna be plenty of manure on their place that's not you know um i guess inoculated with the the igr um and so really right around both my farms where i have cattle there's not other cattle yeah. immediately nearby so that's where that works um of course we won't need that here like through the winter months the, the winter months i do just put out just probably a cheaper mineral just a basic mineral um too because we're keeping out either lick tubs or liquid protein as well um but i do like to leave out a loose mineral year round in the spring once we get into uh you know that spring flush all that that new grass we do feed high mag mineral um, because grass tetany is a little bit of a risk for us. But yeah, your, your soils are going to be completely different there, as far as I would know. And so, I'd reach out to um, yeah, either a local extension or a local, you know, feed mill or something of that sorts that um, uh, is going to be a lot more knowledgeable on your specific region and the needs you'll have there. Um, yeah, it's, that's a cool part of the country. I like, I mean, just because there's cattle everywhere. Yeah. Um, uh, the, uh, but yeah, sorry, I can't maybe be more specific, but I, I know a lot of people that, that, that go really more just generic or basic with their mineral, um, but that, a lot of farm products are expensive, but I feel like I'm getting, uh, you know, return on that investment. Yeah. And, uh, now then they have a lot of other products. I've, I've fed their stocker grower. They have a, um, Oh, I can't remember what they call their products that are specifically for like your, um, your breeding herd. You know, they recommend feeding before, during, and even just after breeding season. Um, but, uh, yeah, good question. Yeah, it is, man. Heath, we appreciate you writing in. Uh, if you got any more questions, do not hesitate to write them in, and we'll do our best to answer them. All right, the next question comes from Derek Brown. <clears throat> I used to work with a guy named Derek Brown when I was a machinist. It seems like there's like a professional football player named Derek Brown. Anyway, Maybe it's yeah. this one. Um, Maybe, yeah. So, Derek, appreciate you writing in. He says, first, yes, lab poodles are gay. Sure, it's a great dog, but just can't do it. Completely agree. They are. They're very gay. Even the name is gay, Labradoodle. So he says, my wife went to a sale barn three years ago for some goats to help clean up pastures and came home with a goat and a Jersey calf. Don't send your pregnant wife to a sale barn. Anyways, we have several horses and the poor steer gets tore up for horse flies. We spray him and the horses with fly spray, but do you have any other tips or tricks to help, specifically on cattle? Love the podcast, boys. Cheers. Well, I'll tell you straight up, burnt oil, a little diesel fuel, and then, uh, is it permethrin? Yeah, that's one of the few things you can actually get, like for back rubbers. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that's that's the popular way to mix up or dope up a back rubber, um, which if you're not familiar with that, it basically it's just a big sock. It looks, yeah, it looks like a huge sock. <laughs> it's a big foam-filled tubular structure, but it's all, yeah, just, uh, it's not foam, but... Um, yeah, that you hang usually between two fence posts or a couple of trees, fence posts, whatever, where they can walk under it. And, of course, then that insecticide, you know, wipes on them. It would be very easy to make one because basically, it, yeah, it's a big tube. And it has, like, 
I mean, essentially like cut t-shirt yeah pieces. yeah if you put the what they call face flips on it i mean yeah it's just cotton strips like yeah you could you could you could absolutely do that like yeah old like super long tube socks but that um you know the spray but yeah horse flies are tough like man oh they hammer mine out here all the time um, dust you know if it which i'm if, if this is the same calf you know and you've had him and he's basically turned into a pet you know i assume you, you can probably you know get your hands on him or get real close you know when he's standing there you know, a little feed bucket first thing in the morning. The fly dust, I like that a lot of times. I use that python dust. Yeah, um, there's several of them that I think you can <laughs> still get on the market. I think um, mine have figured out when I've got it and I'm coming to try to put yeah, it on them. I, I'll use that on my bulls occasionally just because the, the dust isn't practical like for a whole herd. Yeah. Um, you know, you go through two or three bottles a day, but um, until you can kind of tell like, well, depending on the color, which a jersey you should probably still be able to tell, but especially like the black bulls, of course that dust is white, and you know a lot of times if it hadn't rained or anything, the next day you know they're still got a pretty good dusting on them. You don't yeah. have to necessarily re reapply it. Shoot, man, day. when I when I dust mine, we all are dusted by the time I get done. Yeah, it's a uh, horse flies are tough though. Like man, they're they're oh man. I've I've put it on mine out here before. Again, that python dust, and I'll coat them down, which I try to get it near their face too to keep the flies out of their eyes. But like when I put it on there, I'll it'll be horse flies that'll be white, like where it'll coat oh. them. Oh, and I spray my heifers most mornings. I've just got I got like a two gallon, you know, hand like garden sprayer. Yeah, just with a permethrin mix, and uh, <laughs> you know, like if there's a horse fly on one of those back, I'll just sit there and just, <laughs> just try to drown him. And it, I guess. You know, you give them enough of a dose of that. A lot of times, you'll see them; they'll like start to fly off, and they'll they'll fly off, and then you just kind of <laughs> crash to the ground. Like, like, yeah, die, die a slow, painful death. It is. I'll tell you, it's rewarding when I feed ours out here because I just got my three over here. I got the two smaller calves, and then my older one that's pretty good size now. But when I go in there, I feed them. I dump them just some sweet feed out in their trough. And they come pile in there and eat. And there will always be a couple of them. And sometimes it will be the big black ones. I call them the 747s. Yeah. And they'll be like, man, you can see it. They're like burrowed in. And, uh, man, they'll be so over there. And I'll just walk. I enjoy it. I'll walk in there and I'll just go, bam. And, oh, yeah, and they'll like explode. Blood, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you stupid horse flies. And, you know, it's got to be like, I just, I feel bad for the cows. Like when I'm filling oh, up God. their water it'll be one and it'll be they always get like they'll get right where they just can't get them oh, especially yeah, well, smart yeah. oh yeah especially on their like sides and they'll be kicking their leg up trying to get yeah, it they can't they, get to it with their, yep. their head or with their tail well i and of course in the mornings and i've got my dog with me in, in the truck or in the jeep I don't tell how many horse flies a dog gets to eat because of course they get in the cab i've always got the windows down but i'm <laughs> I, i've i've kind of had you know, I just hate horse flies so much. I've got to wear, like, if I catch one, like, up on the windshield, I won't kill it. I just pull a wing off. Because <laughs> I'm like, I want you to die slow. And, yeah. and and suffer, get eaten by another insect or a bird or something. I'll yeah. pull one wing off and throw them on the ground. Because then they're, they can't fly. Yeah. And, I, and I've done that, and I'm like, you know, deep down, do I have, like, some serial killer tendencies? Cause like, that's, <laughs> as long <laughs> as you just keep taking it out on horse flies, oh, yeah, it'll be no, all right. I, I, I can't, you know, I've never... You know, intentionally maimed any other animal, you know, to, to die a slow death other than horse flies. But I, but like, I'll, I got to where I was like, rather than just smash them, like, like no, it's too quick. Like, they don't deserve that kind of death. That's not a bad idea. There's, there's several uh, they like insects their, that I'm kind of that way with. A uh, wasp is another one. Yeah, but I'm not going to grab a wasp. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, the horse flies are. Well, and those freaking horse flies, they even know where to get on humans because they'll get oh, in the middle of my back. Well, it's, it's just natural selection and evolution. Like yeah. the, the ones that, that, that didn't do that always got swatted and killed. That's true. And so slowly over the course of you know history of the earth, you have only the ones that know exactly where to land have, have lived to reproduce. You know, and it's kind of like a it's an increase in pain. Like, like it, you kind of first will feel something. And it's like a hot match being like put to your back, yeah. because then all of a sudden you're like, God, nah, you know, you're like, man, and you know what it is. But it it starts slow yeah. and, and progresses. But uh, yeah, I hate horse flies. But no, I know we, which I I can't think of the dosage. Um, I mean, basically, basically, you just take a bunch of burn oil, 
put some diesel well, when in there. When you buy like the 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 permethrins, most of them, you know, and of course you look at the label and you unfold it and it yeah, stretches yeah, out, golly. you know, four and a half feet. There'll be a, an application on there. Like I, I Does it have that on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, it'll, it, and it it'll say like an oil, you know, mix so many ounces of of the of the permethrin or, or whatever product you've got with, you know, so much of an oil based. And they don't necessarily say like use motor oil and diesel, but yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what it's it's wanting you to mix it with. And uh, man, when we used to put them out all the time, like I remember the cows, you'd see them; they'd be coated good out there. Oh yeah, and, and the cows that use them, which I actually because I was just in one of my YouTube videos. Well, and usually what I do is I'll take um, just an old jug, like usually an old chemical jug that's cleaned out, and mix it in there, and then I'll. Uh, I'll use that to pour it on the back rib. Of course, yeah. it's hard to get it to come out like without spilling a bunch. And oh yeah, you know, and then yeah, you don't want. You know, I mean, I always worry about like, what does the EPA think about this kind of thing? <laughs> but somebody actually commented on one of my YouTube videos. They put it in. Um, they save all their old um, dishwashing liquid bottles. Yeah, and so put you it in those. Like, on there. Yeah, and I'm like that is brilliant. So I'll share that that little tip. Um, like yes, that is brilliant because huh. yeah, you just got the. Just pop the lid down and and then get you just that. can't hold a lot of stuff though yeah but that, i imagine that would be enough you know if you had the you're getting the big bottle i don't know how big they are like 64 ounces yeah. or whatever of uh that's probably enough to to, to, to apply to the yeah. back rubber one good time of course you're gonna need a funnel to fill that up you know to begin with but yeah i think i think that would work pretty good i've yet to do it just because i haven't reapplied mine since i yeah put that video out but. which i mean now it's getting to the it's about to get to the season where you don't it, really worry about it's that getting close but it's man it's they're still awful which this morning was the first time um when i went uh did my morning chores i wore long sleeves this morning it did was you like, wear a felt hat Felt cowboy hat. I know. I was just wearing a ball cap. It was it was before daylight, so I wasn't worried about uh, okay. saw my ears. But I checked um, tonight, and again, I know I've said it like eighteen times. We're recording early, but um, it's gonna be like fifty four tonight. Is our low? Nice. I've already cut off the air conditioner at my house and opened up like half the windows. Well, our air quit working, so that worked out. Perfect time. Well, I, I kind of I was kind of like because I'm kind of frugal on those things, a little bit of a hippie. Like, <laughs> hey, we're gonna we're gonna save some energy and, <laughs> and 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 let the the natural temperature cool our house heck it's been nice nights here for the last week or so it it's has been low 60s and uh oh i'm loving normally the weather. it'll get cool enough during the night even though it's getting up to about 80 during the day you know the house doesn't quite get that warm it's probably just getting just about unbearable and then of course starts cooling off by the yeah. end of the day and so hey if, if, oh if, man if if, if if weather does us right we might a lot of times we can go a month or so without having to have the air on it or and but also you're doing still better than me need heat. you're doing better than me when i i'm i'm a i'm a hippie in some ways but when it comes to like heat and air i'm freaking hammering down man i i got our air cranked down i crank it down to 67 most times and see ours i keep mine on uh because ours has a little range and like it's like 70 on the end of the house where our bedrooms are like uh, usually it's 75 Ooh, damn you lizards you terrarium 75. well i'm not saying i <laughs> prefer that but i'm just cheap um 75 and then 68 is when the heat will cut on yeah um but oh. all in the winter time it's great because yeah it, it's it, you it's, got your heat coming on at 68 or that's what your your heat is well that's what it's set on right now which of course obviously it doesn't do that at all what are you running in the, the winter time do you I'll, run it i'll 68? keep it let it'll be like 66 68 somewhere in there see i run mine at 65 in the winter time yeah we don't go we probably go 66 uh but uh i'm like hell get under the covers no that's what i tell marcy and them i'm like because i'll be like it's cold and i'm like well you put a blanket on put a hoodie on but, uh, yeah but no nah, uh, man ours yeah i'll let it in our bedroom i think i leave it I don't know, I, it ain't me it's my wife i think she'll put it on 73 uh, she, we just we, if i walk in that i can tell the fan on and i sleep with like <laughs> just a sheet you know I, uh, um I, we ain't, you ain't sleeping under the comforter in the summertime man i i can like walk in our house and i can tell when the heat the air is jacked up because if it's 70 degrees i'm like it's hot in this house <laughs> it was like yesterday that's how i figured out the air wasn't working i was like it just don't feel right in here 
I went and looked, and it was 70 degrees. And I said, dang, that gum air is out. It was 71 in there today. I said, yep, that air ain't working. So, man, yeah, I'm, I'm a, uh, I want it like an Arctic temperature in my house at all times. I mean, I got a window unit. I even put a window unit in our bedroom. I keep it on all the time. So, yeah. I'm burning it. Uh, let's see here. My my nostril is getting more. I'm gonna. I am like completely at this mm-hmm. point incapable of breathing through my nose. All right, we got a uh, our last one that I can find on the emails right now. Again, please email us if you got a question. So this comes from Samuel Locke. Hello, Logan and Billy. <laughs> I, I, I've been called much worse. <laughs> yeah. I actually had a teacher one time call me Billy Lee. Billy Lee. And uh, I, I had a teacher one time call me Bobby Joe. It's always like you have a substitute. <clears throat> and so, of course, everybody, like, for forever people call me Bobby Joe. Just Bobby Joe. Funny. And, uh, that's mm-hmm. fine. Billy Lee, that kind of sounds like a singer or something. I feel like you'd be a singer. Well, a rock that, star. That, that's definitely not my name then. <laughs> like a Bon Jovi, kind of like a Billy Lee. Uh, hello, Logan and Billy. Uh, my name is Sam, and I'm from Canada in the province of Alberta. Oh, yeah. Love listening to you Big guys. White tails. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Love listening to you guys. Keep it up. I'm 27 years old, and I work in the oil industry and work for a local farmer on my days off. I want to start farming, row crop myself someday, and I'm working on it. My fiance is a rancher with 200 head cattle operation, cow calf operation. Yep. Nice. We have 250 acres we are looking to break up and seed over. Wanted to get your thoughts on how I should go about it, as there isn't a lot of information on starting on fresh ground. It's been grass and grazed its whole life. Thanks. Okay, Okay, so they're converting it, taking it out of pasture, and putting it into uh, crop production. That's what I'm gathering. Yeah, let's see. 200 head cow calf operation i'd say don't do okay. it just keep the cows out there. i was gonna say bobby lee loves that uh 250 acres yeah 250 acres they're looking to break up and seed over all right this is great this is uh because for me i've done this a few times it's been grassed and grazed its whole life so i'll tell you what i would do now you got to be set up for this and i am at this point i would spray it and i would plant it and i wouldn't do anything else to it um, now, if it's been, uh, you know, obviously if they've had, you know, I don't know much about how they do it in Canada, but if you've had like round bales or something, you need to try to get the the wrap remains out of there. If you don't have to deal with that, man, I would plant it just like it is because pasture ground is, <laughs> to Bobby Lee's demise, it makes wonderful row crop ground typically. Well, especially that's grazing is really great for the for the environment. The it is, <laughs> yep. That cow poops and farts has really helped us out. But uh, I would go in and I would spray it with a pretty hot dose. And on that, I probably wouldn't plant it green uh, starting out. I'd probably go ahead and try to terminate it because you're going to fight grass for probably the first couple years, really. Um, but you need to get on top of the grass. I'd have a hot burn down, get in there and plant it. Now, if it's rutted up, which, again, it probably ain't. You know, if it's been grass and grazed, it's probably typically there. They lay relatively well. I mean, they might be hilly, but they don't usually have a lot of washes and ditches and stuff you got to deal with. So, man, I would burn it down really well, get in there, plant it. I'd still have – I'd have soil samples pulled I'm a believer in soil samples, but I would have your you some samples pulled, and I I mean I'd be shocked if you even needed just a ton of fertilizer for the first couple of years, again because it's going to be pretty fertile from the cattle, and drop in there, plant it again. The biggest thing you're going to have to do you're going to have to be on top of your spraying, because that's what I've seen when I've kind of converted ground like that is a lot of times the uh, grass can try to, like, get away from you. Yeah. I, the, the biggest thing, kind of like the question we answered earlier um, about mineral and Oklahoma Panhandle, man, you're just – you're in a totally different – or you're not even in a different part of the country. You're, not, you're, you're in a different country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I don't even know – the, the grasses um yeah I, I agree with logan i imagine you're fighting the grass but i don't your grass is going to be different than ours i don't know yeah. maybe maybe they aren't as resilient uh, maybe they're more resilient um two it's going to depend on what crop you're you're wanting to plant as well um 
I don't know. I know. Yeah, I don't even know they're growing seasons up there, but yeah, I know they grow a lot of other crops too. So I, I would definitely pose that question to somebody more in your region. Um, but yes, because I think there's a lot of a lot of other little variables that we can't even you know predict just because we're not at all familiar with that part of the country and and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but I I would encourage you to not till it. Um, that's that's yeah. a big yeah, think, thing. Yeah. You uh, you lose so much when you till it. Like I I mean, and you're gonna have a really great foundation being that it had been grazed i actually really wish that logistically i could graze my row crop ground like that's what i I would love to do the winter or the cover crop yeah and then bring in some cattle over the winter and into the spring and have them graze it down and then drop in and plant it man that's that's what i ideally would do if i could but and people are say that all the time like why don't you do this well it's like well because logistically that would be a nightmare well, you, you'd spend tens of thousands on fencing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, you know, that, that, that alone, you know, and then, yeah. Um, you know, in, in certain parts of the country, it, you know, it makes more sense. Um, I know uh, Sunny Farms is a YouTube channel I watch a lot. They're up in South Dakota. Yeah, like all their land is like right there together. Yeah. Most of their, and it's, it's all very flat and, 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 you know property i imagine most of it's in, just in square Squares, sections yeah and uh yeah most of their crop fields are also fenced off so like when they they don't even necessarily i don't i don't i'm not sure how much they deal with cover crops but uh they once they get the corn shield they graze the corn stalks because okay. there's some feed value just in the stalks that are left behind yeah and a little bit of corn is wasted and um uh, you know combine leaves the field they can shut the gate and open another gate let the cows in and yeah they can graze it you you can get several weeks maybe even a month or two of of grazing just on stalks um but yeah i've often thought about that too because yeah you look at all these fields that are planted in cover crop you know about february march (laughs) we're tired of feeding hay and you're like man it'd be nice to turn some cows out in that you know and uh, and yeah you're then yeah because they're just you know you're, you're still getting all the benefits of the cover crop essentially you know, you're not losing those. And even then you get the cows, benefit of the, the cattle. You're getting some yeah. feed for the cows. You know, they're putting manure right back out. You know, a lot of us is going yep. right through them. Oh, yeah. In a perfect world, I think you could really make that work. In our part of the country, that one of the biggest things I've always worried about or, or heard other people talk about is we get so much rain in our soil types. The cow, like, the cows can really muck it up. Yeah. You know, depending on the year and you know how well drained you know the particular you know fields are um and so maybe even so to the point where they you know especially in areas like if you're taking a little feeding bunks you know they're, they're gonna just turn it into a just mud quag there, yeah. yeah so there's, there's all sorts of variables i think it, it does work maybe in better in some areas and parts of the country where they either don't get the rainfall we do or have better drained soils or it gets so cold the ground's hard you know all winter and so yeah. then they can they don't have to worry about that but anyway well that's what i, I a have a thousand different little variables going it is that. it is and that's what I, I have thought of myself like man that would be that would be cool to do and there i've got a couple of fields you know that are 100 and something acres that i'm like if you were going to do it these would be the ones to to fence off yeah. and do it it makes sense i've looked at, at some of the row crop ground we have yeah and said like you know, and it's like, well, you, you could put up per, or temporary fence, like electric. And you're like, ah, oh, then you still got to have gathering pins to put them in. Yeah. You know, whenever you get ready to get them off of there to, to put the spring, you know, crop in. Um, and it's like, man, do I really want to <laughs> spend a bunch of sleepless nights wondering, you know, a couple of strands them in there. Of, of hot wire going to keep them in. So it's like, well, you know, we own this place and, you know, would we want to put it, you know, a permanent fence up, you know. Yeah. Like, ah, oh, you know, as sure as we do that, you know, something will change and we'll decide it's a terrible idea and we'll have thousands of dollars invested in a <laughs> fence that is worthless but anyway. Yeah, it is it is a lot of logistics to it. That's what always kind of tickles me because I've had people tell me how wrong I am on YouTube. Like when I put yeah. out a video, they're like, well, you need to be grazing it and like all this. And I'm like, 
There's you, so you, many different God, factors. Yeah, Just it, because somebody near you does that and makes it work doesn't mean it's the same here. Somebody certainly in a different part of the country. <clears throat> And like we say, sometimes even just on the other side of the county, things can be different enough and, and just, uh, and again, a thousand different little variables where it just won't quite work out as well. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's for sure. Well, man, we appreciate the question. Um, I think that's pretty much got most of us caught up. Again, well, I know that I am forgetting several that have been asked on like Instagram and stuff. Well, and I had a good one. Um, on my YouTube, <clears throat> probably a, a month and a half. Good ago. say it. I got to grab a tissue real quick. Go ahead. Here. Well, and, and I apologize. I can't remember. It was it was on my YouTube channel. Somebody had reached out, but it was a it was a question. I got to think. I was like, man, that, that's going to be kind of a, a little longer form answer. So I said, well, we'll answer it here. But we uh, you know bought thirty heifers back in the spring to breed. Of course, turned out a couple of bulls with them, um, and I had some homegrown heifers as well, but. Uh, had all kinds of bull trouble. Anyway, we finally got around to Preg checking them and only had 21 of the 30 heifers bred. Um, did a 60-day breeding season, pretty standard. And they posed the question, well, would you have rather left the bulls in a little longer, say for 75 or even 90 days, to have potentially gotten more of them bred? And good question. Uh, that's, that's why I said, yeah, probably – Probably need to answer that kind of in this format. Um, and, of course, I made the decision. You know, the simple answer is no. I don't think it would have been worthwhile. Just to get out of cattle is the decision Which, you made. Oh, yeah, not quite. But, it, <laughs> you know, and I guess you could say, well, in hindsight, had I known that only 21 of them were, were going to be bred, would I have left the bull in a little longer? Um, I think the answer is still no. Um you know, kind of the standard for what you want in a breeding season, which, of course, is going to be the same length as your calving season, is 60 days. Most people agree that's ideal. Some people will go even as low as 45 days. Wow. Um, just the tighter they are, the better. Um, you know, your calf crop is going to be much more uniform. You don't want calves born over a four-month period. Yeah. Because calves born on day one of calving versus that calf born 120 days later, that's – that, that that latest born calf is never going to catch back up. Yeah. Um, and so then when you go to sell them, you're, you're not going to have them all uniform where you can put together nice, you know, you know, groups that are going to bring more and that sort of thing. Um, you know, it, even if I've left them in for 75 days, because I thought about it like this. Okay, so I, 21 of my 30 were bred. So if we left the bulls in for 75 days or even 90 days, there's never a scenario where all 30 were going to get bred. Yeah. Or very, very, very unlikely. Um, you, know, you got a couple that just weren't real good heifers to begin with. or, or, or at Early on, they didn't look that different. They all looked pretty uniform. But they just didn't grow off. They kind of turned out to be duds, more or less. They just didn't feel like cracking. <laughs> right. <laughs> they, they weren't getting it done. <laughs> you know, you'd have probably gotten, I mean, even if you'd left me in for another two weeks, say 75 days, you'd have gotten a few more bred. But say if... 24 had been bred in 75 days. The other trade-off is, for me, if I'm looking to buy some heifers and I and they're guaranteed bred in a 60-day window, that means a lot more to me. They're worth more to me. They got it done in the time frame they were supposed to get it done in. Um, because they're a heifer. They're doing this for the first time. They're going to be dropping that calf on the ground next spring. Then she's got it. That's when the real test comes because she's got to heal up from just the, the, the birthing process while she's raising a calf and then get her butt bred back <laughs> for next year in a narrow window. And so if she's not able to get bred in a 60-day window as just a heifer where she ain't got that calf on her side nursing her, pulling her down, she ain't just spit a calf out of that uterus that's trying to heal up. Then, then am I reasonably going to be expecting her to get bred in a 60-day window when she does have all that stuff going on? And so, I don't know. I feel like it makes those 21 even that much more valuable that, yeah, you know, a, a heifer that's guaranteed to have been bred in a 60-day window versus a 90-day window is worth more to me. Yeah. Um, you know. She gets the job done. Yeah, She's she got there. it done in the amount of time she was supposed to get it done in. Now, I had all kinds of bull trouble. So, of those nine <laughs> heifers – that are open, didn't get bred. No doubt there's probably a couple uh, out of those nine that 
that would it, be good. It was not her fault at all. Yeah. Um, the bull just was out of commission the day she was ready. Um, now, in a 60-day window, she should have had two opportunities to have gotten bred, you know, based on their cycle. But, yeah, it may not have been any of her fault, but, you know what, 21 of them got it done. <laughs> and in reality, I'm going to be just fine. I, I bought the heifers at a pretty good price. The market has just been great. The nine that we're going to sell now is just feeders. They're a, a feeder yeah. auction are going to bring good money, and I'm going to make a little money on them. Now, if if things work out like I expect them to, and the bread heifers bring what I think I'm going to be asking for them, I'm going to, I'm going to do. You're you going know, to be buying you a yeah. good dinner that night. Yeah. Buy that, a dollar money. Buy, buy me a new pickup. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no new pickup for me, but um, the kids will get to have Christmas. There you go. Because we're going to go to agzaga.com. Yep. Use our discount code when we buy those toy tractors. Um, Talk or, dirt. Or the, what is it, the Briar horses they're also yeah. um, going to have soon. I'm, I'm not, That's I need to more in your I'm wheelhouse actually. than mine. Oh, yeah. Well, my, my daughter is, of course, horse, horse crazy. But I think, I'm not sure if it's that exact product line, but they also have like the the the, 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 the little cattle, you know. Oh, what, Those are pretty cool what to me, yeah. Greens, yeah, or, uh, whatever. Yeah, I like um, the little rodeo stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, one some of them. Yeah, it is a rodeo setup. Um, you know, or or just I think they cattle, even like grazing cattle, dairy. Didn't they have like basically the PBR spread of like the roping where it had the shoots and everything? I think they do a lot of times. Which, um, yeah, again, talkdirt.com, which. I, you probably saw it in the news. Or talk dirt all all caps. Yeah, talk yeah talk dirt all caps is is the the discount code there. Yeah. Agzaga dot com. A lot more than just toys, but yeah, I thought that was a good segue. That was that was very smooth. That was um, smooth. But speaking of rodeo and PBR, and of course he kind of wrapped up his career doing more. Um, oh, JB Roto. Yeah, JB Mooney announced his retirement this week. Broke his neck. Yeah. Um, so, Said he that's apparent, a pretty good reason to go ahead and retire. He had been putting off the surgery, apparently, hadn't he? I think that the surgery was what did him in. That was well, my understanding. I, I think he had a pretty bad wreck that 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 led to him having to have the surgery. Um, I think he was thirty six, or is so, thirty six. He yeah, didn't die. He looks he like is. he's like fifty, but he's a true cowboy. I mean, that dude smokes and drinks. <laughs> well, and that's, yeah, that's he's a cowboy. Which, like, I mean, they, they are incredible athletes. But yeah, would you see him like behind the bucket shoots before he gets on the bull? <laughs> and he's smoking, yeah, a Marlboro it's red. Kind of like, all right, yeah. But I mean, they don't have to be in, in fantastic cardio shape. You know, eight seconds. You know, the dude just has balls of titanium and yeah, never wore a helmet. Yeah. Never wore a helmet. That's what, dude. He is. Le- well, JB. Some, of, some of the last I saw him riding. You know, he qualified for the NFR. I guess in twenty one. Yeah. Uh, you know, he had, he had been PBR all along. I was glad to see him go NFR in, in pro pro rodeo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I just I liked it. I like the actual rodeo. That yeah. kind of seen better. Not all PBR, but um, made the NFR. Won the first go around. Like t- you know, it's ten straight nights, and then it was round two or three. Got knocked out cold. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. And and it, it, he he rode. I'm pretty sure he he got on all ten bulls, but he was he was hurt. Like yeah. He 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 was not. He he was probably at fifty percent at best. And uh. Well, what did his head a, collide with the bull? Yeah. yeah. Oh uh, gosh. He, he's had a bad wreck getting off one, and um. Yeah, probably concussed yeah. for days. Yeah, long career. Long, certainly, I'd say you know to be still riding. I think he's thirty six at that age. A lot longer than most guys. Dude, I'm going to tell you, and, I don't know that we... at the top of the sport, you know, the whole time. I don't know that we could do it or get it, but, man, he'd be a hell of a guest to get on the show. Yeah. Old JB. Well, he uh, he does. You know, he's linked up and good buddies with um, old Dale Brisby. Okay. Um, yeah. You know, uh, with Radio well, Time. And, if he's buddies with Dale, he'd probably be open to do some I podcasts. Think, uh, I think they do a podcast. Um, JB would be a cool one to have on. Yeah. But... Yeah, I mean, dude, he's legit. He's the last. I mean, you know, the old saying, he's the last of a dying breed because he's a freaking. He is a cowboy. Like he, yeah, smokes, drinks, doesn't wear a helmet. Yeah, I mean, he's took a hell of a beating in his yeah. life, but he, uh, he is bad dude. So, definitely, big congratulations to him on his career. I mean, he's had a hell of a run. Yeah. So, well, you want to cue up the man? Oh man, our our commander in chief. Yeah. Uh, I've got an awesome company tonight. Well, good. Um, well, how do I find him here? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're real professionals. Yes. Let me start off with two words. Made in America. All right. This company, dude, I just found this company. And this is one of their shirts. Oh. Uh, Since 1776, what? blue collar. I noticed that. Um, it's called Chad's. Have you heard of it? C-H-A-A-D-S. No. I'll, I'll have to look them up. I'm going to put them on the list of companies, and I'm gonna, then I'm going to have to look them up. Right now, they even have a deal. You use the code USA50. You get buy one shirt, get one 50% off. So I bought two. I got a slick one. It's got a, a skull with the snake coming out of it, and it's the don't tread on me, but it's real cool looking design. But I just got to read you their like, about me here. This is Chad's. At Chad's, we value the principles of liberty and justice that make this nation great. Getting started, we wanted an America first clothing brand that offered cool designs with high quality fabric. Too many corporations are going woke and betraying the values we hold dear. We looked elsewhere and found many designs weren't tasteful or simply just too cheesy. And so <laughs> this is why I, I love this. So Chad's was formed. Being outspoken about our commitment to freedom hasn't come without its difficulties, though. Trolls, blue-haired feminists, and hyper-leftists don't want to see a company like Chad's succeed. But we aren't here for them. We are here for the patriots that value hard work and free living. People like you. We openly stand for the pursuit of liberty, life, and the pursuit of happiness, the Constitution, family values, free living, and open air. If you like that, we welcome you with a welcome hands and warm hearts. Their shirts are all made here. And you, actually, dang, I didn't realize all of their shirts and hats and hoodies are made right here in the USA with the highest quality materials. I knew the shirts were. Um, yeah, they have, I'm, I'm scrolling right here as, as you read all that. They, uh, oh, they got yeah, some awesome designs. Yeah, the yeah. white one there. Well, the one that's uh, don't tread on me. I saw the one that sounded like you were describing uh, yep. um, with the snake coming out of the skull. Yes. I mean, the designs are awesome. And uh, the fact that their hats are made in the USA, I wish I had ordered a hat. That I didn't is, realize that. That is pretty awesome. So, I mean, yeah, and dude, I just found found this thing. And again, you know, I, we don't talk about anything we don't have experience with. The shirts are awesome shirts. Um, and yeah, the hats are cool. Like... But I, if I had known they were made in the USA, I'd have ordered a hat, too. Yeah. But Chad, C-H-A-A-D-S is the name. And, uh, again, USA 50 is their code right now for buy one, get one shirt half off. So I, I landed some. I see they even got underwear. Socks and underwear. Well, highly encouraged. These are the kind of companies that we need to rally behind that aren't caving to it man i love to see uh, companies the, coming the out. underwear are not made in the usa but and they, all it said it said their hoodies their hats and their t-shirts okay um but and i i want to say even some of their cotton might be from the usa so yep. um check them out i'm telling you they got some awesome designs like i'm a i'm a big fan of the the designs which again i you know i hope to it someday maybe have some skeletons gracing my arms and uh so yeah i've got a skeleton on my chest on my other shirt of theirs so check out chad's yeah you didn't found you a couple man i'm, I'm gonna put i'm gonna think i'm gonna put two in the in the shopping cart which one are you going with right here the freedom is that freedom ain't free it's it's like a cowboy skeleton yeah so he's speaking my language what's, what's he doing he, he's on a is he riding a bull or a bronco? No, he's sitting on a, like a, just a rail fence. Looks like he's got a cold drink in his hand. Nice. But, um, yeah, I'm always like, well, like you got on that dark colored tee. I, I, yeah, it looks like he's holding on my bottle of beer. Yeah, I like pretty, it. You got giving the rock on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that, that might be a good one there. How, how what's how do they run if somebody goes on there? This is a large, and I so, normally wear an extra large. I was about to say, yeah, that's a large. I can probably go with a large. They did good because they're long. What gets me on a large a lot of times is they're short. Now, for people listening, I'm six one, and I weigh hell. I weigh two hundred and twenty pounds. I weighed this morning two twenty, which I'm glad. I'm actually trying to get up to about hell. Actually, I told Marcy I think I might go for two forty. Uh, I'm trying to not be fat and get there though, but. uh I'm at uh, 6'1", 220, wearing a large, 
and uh, it fits good, and it's got the length. That's what gets me a lot of times being taller guy. The shorts will be sh- uh, short. Shorts will be short. The shirts will be short, and these are not. So I'd get well, a lot. Every one of them I like, they don't have in my size. Yeah, they had several that were sold out. Yeah, but what you get <clears throat> like that's one of the challenges with American made. Yeah, yeah. The, the the just the, the whole supply chain, everything. It's it's a little tighter, so you got to be you got to be a. Uh, a little bit patient sometimes with yep. these companies, but um, I'm going to pick out a couple. I'm going to find some. Well, you'll like them, man. Like I said, I, I, I refuse to buy like a white T-shirt. Like, <laughs> I will wear that one time, and it will be stained all to hell. Yeah, uh, my other one's white. I have to make myself wear it only for like something I know I'm not going to get dirty doing. Okay, so. here you go. This one's in a. This one's in in black. So I think I. There you go. Yeah, I'm gonna grab but a you couple. Got to get them. two for that deal. Oh, I will. I'll well, guys, go to that. Uh, Chad's support them check them out I think the designs are pretty awesome they got something just about for everybody and uh, again we asked you to go to talkdirtpodcast.com submit your questions on there we'd love to, to hear your questions uh, if you're watching please hit that like button hit subscribe and if you're listening please leave us a rating and a review I hadn't harped too bad here lately but we want those ratings and reviews uh and next week will be the kickoff of the giveaway, the yeah. 100th episode. This is episode 99. Hold on. Is this 99 or is this 100? Or wait, this is 100. Yeah. I we forget. made it all the way to the end. Dude, I this forget. this is our 100th episode. We are uh, we're, we're we're a, a week, week ahead. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the 100th episode. I can't believe. Oh, man. We, we didn't, we didn't do, do that. We should have uh, talked that in the very beginning. We can't hear it because we don't have our headphones on, but they're cheering for us right now. Yeah. So we got to 100. Yeah, the, the tricky thing this week, and it's because of my travel schedule, we're recording 100 before 99 technically yeah. even drops. But I uh, can't believe that we did not. Yeah, happy 100th to us. <laughs> yes. So when this episode drops, dang, when this episode drops, the giveaway will be live. Don't panic. We're going to run it for several weeks so you have a chance to enter. But you'll go to our website, talkdirtpodcast.com, and there should be an entry fee on there, like entry form, as soon as you get on the website. Do, if do I we do want to go ahead right. and set up a, a time frame of how long it'll run? Because this episode will come out on September Not 22nd. yet, in case I have a hard time getting it on the website. Okay. So just get on there and, and do it. Um, it'll, it'll be live starting on September 22nd, unless we have technical difficulties. <laughs> We're going to give you all several weeks, you know, yeah. like at least two or three weeks to, yep. to do it. Um, and we'll pick a winner, and then we'll start seeing if we can make some travel arrangements for somebody to be sitting right here with us. Yep, that's right. Wow. All right. 100 episodes. That's right. It's flown by. It, it has. has. That's pretty cool. All right, guys. We appreciate you. We'll catch you next week.